I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? yesterday hair in my ear i'm starting to look like the fly he couldn't put his finger on what was missing show him the brochure but his friends could two weeks the three of us it's a real old-fashioned cattle drive welcome to the stone ranch what do you think i think you look like one of the village people i'll pay for that shirt too <laughs> that is the toughest man i've ever seen in my life oh, no! hi curly kill anyone today staying over yet this summer, Billy Crystal, Daniel Stern, and Bruno Kirby... City folk. ...hit the trail. I'm 39, I'm saying, moo cow in a river! He believes us! <laughs> City Slickers, rated PG-13. I'm on vacation! Special sneak preview Friday and Saturday at a theater near you. Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. And I'm redoing this video because the audio was screwed up. I, I need to get a better microphone or some some type of fix. I don't know it yet. If I use the webcam, I think people will be annoyed by the sound quality. I, I'm doing my best, guys. I'm doing my best, so I apologize. But this is another request for Sean, and it's for City Slickers. Now, if anyone wants to request any type of reviews, topics, reactions, pretty much any type that type of stuff, you just send your request either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. It need to be reviews of movies, something else, topics, reactions, re-reviews, what have you. Now, City Slickers is a film I really enjoy. I grew up with the film. I, It's a movie where I'll probably put in my top 20 favorite comedies. And I'm not even like a big Western guy, but yes, there's a Western feel to it, but it does take place in modern time. And I think it has all the elements where... It's very funny, but I think it's also very heartwarming. But I also really get invested with the story and the arc that the characters go through. And uh, I, to me, it all works wonderfully on a great package. You have Ron Underwood directing, who had just done Tremors, which is a personal favorite of mine. You got Billy Crystal, Daniel Stern, Bruno Kirby. Uh, of course, Billy Crystal famous comedian done a lot of stuff from when Harry met Sally he was in the Princess Bride this is to me one of his best roles as Mitch Daniel Stern plays his buddy which he has his own troubles with messing around even though he's married to this queen bitch of the sea and is married but he fools around you find out he's fooled around with this 20 year old girl in a grocery store and it's actually played by Yearly Smith the, the 20 year old and his life's going down the tubes. Bruno Kirby, he's a guy who's always excited for the next adventure and has this great model, this beautiful lady, but doesn't know if he wants to settle down. So they're each going through their different tribulations, the different trials through life. And when the movie was being made, I know at one point, Rick Moranis, I guess, was supposed to be the Daniel Stern role, but I guess because of the elements of his wife, he 
left, which is understandable. And so Daniel Stern played that role. And like I said, what I really enjoy the movie is not only do I think it's rather funny, but I try to appreciate what the story was about where Billy Crystal is having a birthday and he's 39 years old. And for him, he feels like this is the last step and everything's downhill. He does this thing for his kids' school where the kids bring their parents and they talk about their job. And he pretty much gives a wet trip to the class about how your life goes by fast and how at one point, like in your 40s or 50s, you'll have a procedure. It's, it's operation, but you'll call it a procedure. And how you'll be in the nursing home or you'll be wandering around the mall going, how come the kids don't call? How come the dis- kids don't call? And as he puts it, he's lost. He's lost. He feels lost. And his wife even says, hey, your friends invited you to this vacation where it's a cattle drive. Go and find your smile. And he goes, what if I don't? And she, she goes, well, we'll jump that bridge when we get to it. Meaning, could be a cost of his marriage. Who knows? Now, before I go on, of note, it's a small role, but the, the kid who plays his son is Jake Gyllenhaal. Very young Jake Gyllenhaal. So I thought that was interesting. And I really got a kick out of the humor in this. I know a lot of people prefer City Slickers 2. We, do, we agree to disagree. To me, City Slickers 2, I just, for me personally, didn't think it was as funny as this one. I definitely didn't think it had the heart to it. It tried with the John Lovitz brother stuff with Billy Crystal. I, I'm not a big John Lovitz guy here. I thought the bond of the three guys worked a lot better. And, you know, from the opening, which is fun, because they're at a previous adventure where there's a running with the bowls. And you see it's the real actors with the real bowls in the same shot. And I thought that was rather impressive. And then you have the opening animated intro similar to Peter Sell's Pink Panther films. I thought that was kind of fun and unique. Because not a lot of comedies did that, especially at this time, because this came out in 1991. And from the get-go, like, that was a fun opening. And then after the the credits, Billy Crystal's been hurt because of the bowl. And he turns around to the doctor. He's like, hey, doctor, hello. Don't sew up anything that should not be sewed up, okay? <laughs> and then Danny Stern's taking pictures. What, are you doing this? What is a Kodak moment? He's taking pictures of the doctor at Bill Crystal's. Oh, great. Blind him with the flash. And throughout the film, like the little snippets of dialogue that they throw out there, I thought because the performances were genuine, the asides, the little dialogue asides, I found rather humorous, rather funny. Like when they're talking about Bruno Kirby comes up with the idea, okay, let's say, uh, there's no way your wife could find out. You could be with a beautiful girl. And he's like, no, they would find out. You see how, you know, they go to groups, they talk to each other. And then Brutal Kirby's like, okay, let's say a spaceship comes down. Bill Kirby, oh, a spaceship. You hear this guy? No, let's say. Like little as- weird aside conversations. Or how, okay, I'm a married guy, but I can look at beautiful women just like I can look at Picasso. And Bruno Kirby goes, oh, she's a Picasso now. And so Billy Crystal goes, no, she's not a Picasso. If she was a Picasso, she'd have three tits. <laughs> so that's for me, a lot of the funniest size later on, granted, it may seem dated, but uh, Daniel Stern is confused about taping with the VCR, even though it might not be on the right channel and how you're able to do that. Some people might not even know what the hell a VCR is. So again, maybe for a newer viewer, it may seem dated, but it's still relatable because you could just plug that in for whatever technology of today that you want to use. It's, again, it's people just being natural with their dialogue. Or they're conversing, they're big fans of baseball, or they're, when they go on this cattle drive, there's a bunch of other side characters, including this lady, 
And she's like, oh, guys, you always talk about baseball. Well, what you talk about? Well, we talk about relationships. How's it going? How's it not? And then Bruno Kirby goes, we win. What do you mean you win? Lady, if that was as interesting as baseball, they will sell it in cars and pack it with gum. <laughs> and I didn't. They may not find funny to other people, but just the way the performers did their jobs. Uh, Bruno Kirby, he was in Good Morning Vietnam. He was in, I think, The Godfather 2. He, Bruno Kirby's been, sadly, he's passed away since then, which is too bad. But yeah, Bruno Kirby, for me, was definitely missed in, in City Slickers 2. Because I think the three of them had good camaraderie with each other. And then amongst the, the cow drive, they meet their boss, played by Jack Palance. Now, if one understands... Charles Bronson was the first choice and they offered it to Bronson but Bronson said no because spoiler alert spoilers the character dies he didn't like that so Jack Pounds took the role and then he won an Oscar now well I don't know if this is a performance that deserves an Oscar win but I thought Jack Pounds it was nice to see him in this kind of role and it gave him a little bit of resurgence granted later he would be in films like Cyborg 2 and City Slickers 2, Cops and Robertsons, but a little bit of rejuvenation. But Jack Palance, granted, he's not in the film a whole lot, and I don't hate City Slickers 2. I'll get to that in the next video. I like it for what it is. One of the reasons is because there is more screen time with Jack Palance. But, you know, he's that crusty old man, but uh, the character he plays, Curly, you can tell he's still got a heart to him. I liked his back and forth with Billy Crystal. You killed anyone today? Day ain't over yet. <laughs> or when Billy Crystal's trying to rope a cow and he's fucked it up, and then Jack Pounds just goes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I thought they made a nice bond, you know, when they helped birth this calf, and he's like, Good job, cowboy. And then. That's what I mean. The humor and the heart, I thought, blended together very well. Because the, the heart to this, there's moments like between those two where, you know, you guys, you come up here. This is what Jack Palance tells Billy Crystal. You come up here, you think you're just going to solve all your problems. You know what the meaning of life is? What? This. Your finger? <laughs> no, just one thing. Then everything else don't mean shit. What's the one thing? That's for you to figure out. I thought that was a really nice poignant moment. Uh, the moment where the three of them, uh, Daniel Stern, Bruno Kirby, Bill Crystal, they're driving the, the cattle and they're talking about their best day. And like Daniel Stern talked about his best day is his wedding day. And his buddies can't believe it because the lady, his wife was such a humongous bitch. He's like, no, no. I mean, my dad was proud. And uh, Well, what's your worst day? Every day afterward is a tie. That's what I mean. It's like you, it's very you know nice, heartfelt. You know about the character, and then you slide in some fun humor that doesn't feel off the beam path, off the tone. Or you get something like Bruno Kirby's character, where he talks about you know the the best day is when he had to throw his father out because he was cheating again on his mom. He's like, "You're no good for us. I'll take care of my mom and my siblings." And you never saw him again. Well, what was your worst day? Same day. And that's what I mean. That's why, for me, I like this more than the second film. Because you get nice, real, character-driven moments like that. Along with fun hygiene, like the two guys who are behind the ice cream. Was it Barry and Barry? I forget the name. Something and Barry. The, the ice cream guys. I think David Paymer and Josh Mustel are their names, the actors. Or when there's a a stampede because Billy Crystal had the, the coffee out. If you wonder what that noise is, it's the AC. I'm sorry. I just it's too damn hot. I need the AC on. I apologize for the sound. Another example of the, the humor as well as the, the drama working well hand in hand. These two guys are fucking with the, the group 
And Daniel Stern gets a gun. He's like, I hate bullies. I hate them. And they ease him up. He's like, I want some peace and quiet all here. He names some serious things. And then he adds, I think I got a rash from mating in the bushes. <laughs> and see, it's a nice culmination of the characters where by the end it's them wanting a do-over. A do-over in life. That there is a, your life isn't over. That you can have a second chance. In a way, after this journey, the three characters are reborn. And I felt that way. When it comes down to just the three of them driving this cattle through the water, you know, through the rain, across the river, saving this calf that Billy Crystal helped birth from a dying cow uh, named Norman, which is a cute, very cute animal. The score, I thought the score was, a, it's something that felt like a glove. It had the fun, energetic hype for the, the comedic sequences or like the opening title animations. It also could uh, deviate into the epic western. <laughs> but also worse than the softer moments, but also worse than the comedy. Like, all the beats are hit very well by the, the composer. And like I said, I, I watch it again. I still got quite a few laughs out of it. Uh, whether it be the little silly montage where they're gearing up and they're trying different hats and they're riding horses the fir first time. Then the next shot, they all got ice packs on their crotch. The the whole, I was talking the VCR bit where the Dan Stern is still confused. And then Bruno Kirby's like, he won't get it, okay? It's been four hours. Even the cows got it. He just won't get it. <coughs> and there's other recognizable actors. There's Tracy Walter, who was Jack Nicholson's sidekick in Batman. He was uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's sidekick in Conan the Destroyer. He's there as Cookie, who's uh, the cook. Uh, a guy named Noble Willingham, who's a guy that... He's one of the people that sends the cow drive off on their journey. Noble Willingham, probably most famous for, I want to say, Walker, Texas Ranger. He's been in other stuff, too. I believe he was the bad guy. He's one of the head bad guys in Blind Fury and maybe the last Boy Scout. I think he's the, the guy where they blow up his car in the last Boy Scout at the end. I believe that was Noble Willingham. <laughs> but yeah, I thought the film, like I said, it, it's a hilarious film. I don't know how many times I'm going to repeat that. Probably 10 more with the way I do it. And I'm trying to think, like, is there anything I'm missing out? Well, I mean, I don't want to give every single bit away for those who haven't seen it. Yeah, I think it, it's a it's a, it's a a story that does a good job showcasing a person's midlife crisis and how through this journey, this adventure, you know, Billy Crystal's character finds his smile and things are going to be better. And you may be 39 years old, but that doesn't mean your life is over. And that was kind of my, one of, again, one of my issues with the sequel. One, I just didn't think it was as funny. Two, John Lovitz annoyed the piss out of me. And three, the characters kind of went through their arc, so there's really nothing else to their characters and and the sequel. I mean, that's just me, though. But with that said, uh, I love the film. If people don't, that's cool, but it's, it's a personal favorite of mine. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We will see you guys later. Bye-bye.